What's going on guys, it's Simo coming back at you guys with yet another live dual commentary. So on the left, we have Sky Striker Orcus, in my opinion, probably gonna be the strongest deck up until we get the January 2020 ban list, because if you haven't seen this deck yet, oh boy, it is absolutely crazy. And going up against Salomon Great on the right, this Locals in particular just has a lot of Salomon Great players, which is perfectly fine. Salomon Great's still one of the best decks of the format, in my opinion. So we get to see a uh, pretty good meta matchup here. So we're gonna start to see things with the uh, Sky Striker Orcus player, starting with a reinforcement of the army for Dark Greffer. Dark Greffer incredible because it's not only a starter, but it's also an extender in some instances as well. But looks like we're gonna start with a normal summon of Greffer here, use the effect and pitch a copy of Harp. And now he gets to send anything to the graveyard that he wants, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, you already have the Harp, so that's kind of all you're really worried about. You can send Skeleton here, I guess, to help extend your plays a little bit further if need be. I think that'd be the best target. I'm not really sure what else you'd wanna send in this particular instance, because if you already have the Harp, you're pretty much good to go. We're going to banish the harp here. Now you know there's no ash blossom because typically ash would come down on the harp since harp is a hard once per turn. That is going to summon Orcus Nightmare from the deck. Now we have our two monsters, one of them being an Orcus, to go ahead and summon a copy of Orcus Galatea. So now Galatea hits the field. We can banish the Nightmare to send a copy of Wand and pretty much do our regular standard Orcus combo, which is going to end uh, typically with a Mascarena as well as an Orcus Babble. And we already have the Symbol Skeleton loaded in the graveyard. So that's actually good because if there's a way to get to Crescendo, like if we hard drew it or if we hard drew Babble, we can search the opposite card and that way we have an even stronger setup than usual. Looks like we're gonna go for Babel here though. That's pretty typical. And then at this point, we can just go ahead and uh, make our uh, Dingirsu here. Dingirsu can just attach the harp that has been banished. Now we can both link off both the Dingirsu and the Nightmare for a Mascarena. And like I said, the Galatea is in the grave. So uh, not only do we have a nice uh, fuel of link fodder for the Mascarena, but if we happen to have something like Crescendo, which it actually looks like the Sky Striker Orcus player has in his hand, that's gonna make this turn one setup even stronger simply due to the fact that you're just gonna be able to not only uh, have the Mascarena for disruption, but you're gonna have the Crescendo for disruption as well. That is huge. This is one of the strongest setups of the current format. And if you're planning on attending any high level event, you need to be prepared to break the Mascarena Babel setup because it is just incredibly strong and honestly just wins games on its own. So Simon Group player is going to start with a Flame Buffalo. Very, very strong card. You can link off for uh, Bay Links here, and then that'll trigger its effect to uh, discard a Cybers and draw two. But the Bay Links will also go ahead and search for a uh, Salomon Great Sanctuary. But the Buffalo effect is going to be met with Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. That's so unfortunate. So no draws coming from the Salomon Group player. He's going to use Signet Mining, Pitching Jaguar, which is going to get hit by Crescendo. And man, that is just absolutely rough. One of the things about the these Sky Striker Orcus decks too is that they play a ton of hand traps so that's another thing you have to consider so it looks like the Salmanga player hard opened the sanctuary which means he wasn't able to chain block the buffalo and sometimes that does happen and you get punished for it because Ash would be able to us uh, be not be able to hit that buffalo but instead only have to go after that sanctuary and or excuse me that Bay Lynx getting that sanctuary and not a lot of players are, really use Ash on the Bay Lynx in that instance when we see the Bay Lynx come down though we're gonna see a uh, copy of Phantasme now. So man, the Sky Striker Orcus player just had like everything. Not only did he have the Ash Blossom, he still hasn't used his Masquerade. Now he gets Phantasme to get a couple more cards and uh, just help sculpt his hand a little bit more. Just an absolutely crazy setup. Keep in mind, he hasn't even used the Sky Striker cards in addition to that. The Sky Striker cards just adding a whole new layer of depth and complexity to the strategy. We're gonna see Jack Jaguar uh, come back to the zone that Bay Lynx is pointing towards just by shuffling back uh, one of the cards. And now we're gonna go ahead and see where he goes from here. Again, his options are so limited here just because the Mascarena is still so imposing at this point. Now he has a card in his hand to be able to just spin away something like with Unicorn. He can still just go ahead and banish his Harp here, which it looks like he's going to do. And that's going to allow him to go ahead and uh, get any of his Orcus monsters here. He can go ahead. He already, if he has a second skeleton, he could get that. And it looks like he does. Most players are playing two skeleton now. So bear that in mind, just because they want to make sure that they don't banish one off of the Gizmek, since Gizmek does banish eight cards all the time. And now we're going to see Mascarena trigger here. So we're going to send the skeleton and the Mascarena for the effect to go ahead and summon Nightmare Unicorn, presumably. I'm not sure what else you'd really want to go for in this instance. 
and it looks like oh he's gonna go for long gear suit interesting okay so long gear suit hits the field now we can actually use the effect of skeleton engraved to resurrect din gear suit at any opportunity that he sees fit he also could just potentially want to use this long gear suit to uh, shuffle back his resources and uh, send a card at link point but we'll just have to see where he decides to go here we're gonna see a spinny get pitched out of the salmon grip player's hand that way he's gonna boost one of the attack values of his salmon grip monsters i don't think it matters too much here i guess you can make the jack jag over 23 but it looks like he's pointing towards the bay links to make it a thousand and now he can resurrect that spinny but again his options are not looking too strong here just because of all of the uh, all the disruption that the orcus player had Still interested to see why he made this long gear suit. We'll just have to see here. We're going to link off the Jack Jaguar and the Bay Lynx for a uh, Sunlight Wolf I presume. Oh, a Hita. Okay, there is an Ash Blossom in the graveyard. So Hita could be of uh, use here, but I'm curious to see where this is going to go. He could just banish the Skeleton at this point and uh, just remove the Hita so that way he's out of Link materials aside from... Yeah, it's just... And, oh yeah, it looks like the Salamanger player is just going to scoop it up because that was just way too much there. And uh, we're going to game number two. And I want to remind you guys that we do have Pro Play Tour Las Vegas coming up on December 15th. It's a great event because there's a Konami-sanctioned regional on the 14th at the exact same venue on the same weekend. So you can go to two events in one weekend. Our event is a $2,000 cash prize pool event. And if you make the top uh, 32 breakdown, you are going to get your invite to the $10,000 cash prize invitational taking place in January. So links are in the description and I hope to see you guys there. So now we have a uh, sign at mining starting off for the Salamanga player. No surprise that he wants to go first. He's going to pitch Spinny to get Gazelle. And now we're going to go ahead and just see, uh, should be full combo here. I imagine. I mean, just you pretty much have everything you need at this point to set up pretty well. And I'm curious just to see how far he's going to go. So we're going to go ahead, bring back the Spinny, make the Mirage Stallion. You don't have the Bay Lynx at this point. So that's the only uh, rather unfortunate part here, but it should be perfectly fine. Now we're going to go ahead, use the uh, Mirage Stallion. We'll probably summon Jack Jaguar here since we already have Falco in the grave. I think if you're the Salamander player in this instance, you want to prioritize getting to Abyss Dweller, which might be my he uh, searched the uh, Falco in particular. And uh, this way he should be able to uh, establish Dweller, I think, underneath a Sunlight Wolf. I think that should be the very base setup he should get at this point. But yeah, if your deck can make Dweller and you're going up against any Orcus variant or even the Mirror Match, just making Dweller can honestly just be enough in a lot of instances. So so here comes a Sunlight Wolf that is going to get met with Phantasmae, but that's going to get met with an Ash Blossom. Very interesting there to see that because that is a minus one on the uh, uh, Salamander player's part. Granted, he can get the Ash Blossom back, so I guess it's not too bad. However, um, that's still a pretty strong move. That's just denying the Sky Striker Orcus player from getting any additional tools to help deal with stuff like this Abyss Dweller here. So I'm curious to see where this is going to go. So now here comes the Jack Jaguar and uh, the Falco being uh, made into an Abyss Dweller. That Jack Jaguar was normal summoned, so do keep that in mind. And now that's pretty much it. We have a one set card, but realistically, that's really all you need from Salomon Grade. If you can just set up an Abyss Dweller, have Sunlight Wolf in addition to that. It's not even Reincarnation Link Summon, but honestly, you're looking pretty good. This Dweller is going to probably do enough. We're going to see the Sky Striker Orcus player start with the Lure of Darkness. At this point, you could freely use Use the dweller because you don't have to worry about um uh infinite and permanence because there's a card on the field now but it looks like he's going to use ash blossom on the allure of darkness and then chain the dweller as a result of that that's a pretty strong move just again denying the sky striker orcus player from getting into any further resources to try to out this dweller playing very aggressively a lot of players won't um have <laughs> have the balls quite frankly to ash a uh, allure of darkness typically they'll wait for something a bit more threatening but it looks like his plan's going to work here because all we see is a set monster and a set back from the Sky Striker Orcus player. So again, even though Sky Striker Orcus and these Orcus variants are the strongest decks of the format, they are by no means unbeatable. Stuff like a turn one Abyss Dweller is still very effective. And if your deck can make it, which a lot of the top decks have the ability to, it's going to be pretty strong. So here comes a Twin Twister in response to the Will of the Salamangrate played by the uh, Salamangrate player here. And so now this is going to be pretty big. It looks like he has the Artifact Sanctum here, but unfortunately, Artifact Sanctum won't be able to uh, really get a lot of value here. He can use the Sanctum's effect to pop a card because it is being destroyed, I believe. I'm not 100% sure if that has to be during the opponent's turn. It might have to be. It looks like he's going to flip it, though, so he's not going to get a battle phase this turn. Um, and Artifact Sanctum, it looks like, will be destroying that card as well. You do get both effects if you decide to chain it if it's being destroyed, so that's pretty strong. Strong. 
And uh, here comes the Lancia. Now, this is like fine, I feel like, because like even though you can't really use it now, it doesn't matter because you can just save Lancia for when your opponent's turn comes around, just tribute it off, and uh, that's perfectly okay. But again, keep in mind, you do lose your battle phase, I believe, if you use Artifact Sanctum on your own turn, but it doesn't really matter. You can just still set up perfectly well and uh, feel pretty good about it. So now we're going to go ahead and link off the Sunlight Wolf as well as the Spinny here. Looks like we might be going into a Heat Leo by chance. Oh no, we're going to reincarnate the Sunlight Wolf. And now here comes the Phantasme. We knew this was in the hand. And this is going to allow the Sky Striker Orcus player to fix his hand a little bit, maybe get some resources he needs to kind of get out of this jam, because that Abyss Dweller is really hampering his plays. But in addition to that, now you have the uh, Lancia that's just sitting on the board being just as imposing. Keep in mind, you can tribute Lancia from the field as well as your hand, so it's still just as strong. So looks like he fixed his hand up here, got uh, another additional card, and you get the Phantasme, which can actually just beat over the Dweller. We're going to see Jack Jaguar, uh, excuse me, Jack Jaguar resurrect itself to Sunlight Wolf's arrow, and uh, just continuing to further the amount of resources that he has. And now it looks like he's going to add the Ash Blossom back to his hand, triggering uh, from Sunlight Wolf's effect, of course, the first effect. He can also add back a Sal uh, Salmon Great Spell or Trap. He has the will in the graveyard, so he could potentially get that back here. So we'll have to see if he opts to do that at some point a little bit later on. Obviously, it's not important right now. And there we go. It looks like he's going to get that will back to your hand. Such Sunlight Wolf, just such a powerful card. I mean, it's basically a plus two every turn if it just stays up on the field. If it's Reincarnation Link Summon, such a good threat. So now we're going to link off the Jack Jaguar for a Bay Lynx that is going to net us a Sanctuary now. So now we can Reincarnation Link Summon freely uh, just using a card with the same name. So we finally get that established here. Now you can link off this Bay Lynx for another one just so you have some protection for your Salaman Great Monsters in the, uh, on, that are currently on the field. And again, if you're the Salamander player, you gotta be feeling pretty good from this position. Again, Phantasme is going to take care of Dweller, but Dweller's gonna run out of materials anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much, and it looks like he's gonna pass play back to the opponent. His turn, uh, Sky Striker Orcus player's turn starts, immediately tributes off Lancia from the Sanctum, and again, this is just, this is horrible for the Sky Striker Orcus player. You're facing down Dweller plus Lancia, like that's just rough. So reinforcement of the army coming, it looks like he was going to chain Dweller. Honestly, you're going to lose Dweller to your Phantasme this turn no matter what, so you might as well just chain it and just get the value off of it that you can. Again, there's not really much that the Sky Striker Orcus player is going to really be able to set up this turn. He can attack over the Dweller and maybe make you waste the Bay Lynx in the graveyard, but with the ability of not being able to banish cards or use the effect of anything in the graveyard, yeah, it's looking pretty rough for the Sky Striker Orcus player this turn. But again, this just goes to show that it is not an unbeatable strategy, but it's still a very strong deck nonetheless. Sky Striker Orcus player is taking a quick look at the graveyard here. And also uh, just double checking what cards are added back off Sunlight Wolf. Here comes Armageddon Knight. That's going to get met with Ash Blossom. Honestly, why not at this point? Like, don't even allow him to get set up. Granted, he already has the Nightmare in Graveyard anyway. So, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I don't really know what you can do at this point. I think he has like a Twin Twister and like a Shark Cannon in hand. That's not like the most threatening. I guess you could maybe do something with that Shark Cannon potentially, depending on if you have enough spells to be able to resurrect something out of your opponent's graveyard. We'll have to see. So um, he could potentially like make a link to Shark Cannon something back and then go into like Unicorn, discard the Twin Twister to shuffle something away. I guess that's okay, but Salamon Great already has a lot of its resources set up, so it can kind of just establish its board again next turn. This seems like a lost cause, but I guess if you can just wait another turn and potentially get out of this mess, maybe with the banishing effects of your Nightmare and your Skeleton, you can make something happen here. We'll just have to see. So Phoenix is going to come down and actually pop the Sanctuary, interestingly enough. Interesting he didn't opt to uh, put it to the arrow that Sunlight Wolf is pointing to just to get another draw. Yes, the uh, Salamander player would have gotten a card back. However, um, at least he would have made... At this point, you're kind of far behind. You need to kind of start uh, just digging for more options here. So we'll see. Oh, it was a Widow Anchor. Okay, not a Shark Cannon. So that changes things up a bit here. So now he's going to go Widow Anchor in battle phase and then take the Sunlight Wolf and then he can go ahead and attack and uh, that clears the Bay Lynx. Again, Dweller's not really a threat at this point anymore, so it's not too big of a deal. So we're going to have to see where he goes from here. It's going to link off the Phoenix and the... 
uh, Sunlight Wolf for a possible Link 3 or Link 4. He could go for Zero Boros if he's playing it. Zero Boros does only require two monsters. Bomber's another option as well, uh, but it looks like he's gonna go for Zero Boros here. So that's online. Unfortunately, he doesn't have like a babble or anything to be able to trigger it on the opponent's turn because he does have that skeleton set up. So that's a bit unfortunate. So Zero Boros is a little bit of a Hail Mary here and uh, kind of just hoping that, you know, he can't out it and maybe survive another turn. Here comes Will of the Salomon Great though. We already knew he had this in his hand. This is gonna allow him to get back at least one monster. And there is the Gazelle. Oh, it's gonna be one monster. He doesn't have a Link monster, excuse me. So Gazelle's gonna come down. Now he's gonna go ahead and uh, dump Spinny from his deck, resurrect the Spinny. He uh, sh uh, quickly changed zones. Obviously uh, his opponent didn't call him out for that, but it's uh, that's perfectly fine. Again, keep in mind this is just a local, so it's a bit of a friendly environment. And uh, now we're gonna go straight into Mirage Stallio. This is a way that pretty much you can easily clear the Zero Boros. As soon as you link off the Mirage Stallio, you can easily just bounce the Zero Boros back to the extra deck and uh, you'll have full control of the game from here at this point. He's gonna grab Foxy with the Mirage Stallio. Again, he has like everything set up at this point. He has the Jack Jaguar, he has the Falco, he has the Spinny. I think Foxy's like the only card he doesn't have set up in the grave at this point. So like, why not? You might as well just get it going. And now he's gonna link those off into a Sunlight Wolf, bounce the Zero Boros back into the extra deck with the effect of the Mirage Stallio. And at this point you have uh, 3,500 damage on board, nothing crazy. He can potentially get a lot more just depending. Oh, is that a Lancia in his hand? Oh man, that might just, that might be the nail in the coffin for this one. If he already has the Lancia and the, <laughs> and the Orcus, uh, Sky Striker Orcus player has no cards, like this is just over. Oh my God. Even if he just, even if he continues at this point, I don't think it matters. He's gonna go ahead and link off though and uh, make a Hita. Hita's gonna resurrect the Phoenix that was in the Sky Striker Orcus player's graveyard. So that gives him a 3750 worth of damage, I believe. He could link these off into like a Heat Leo and then potentially resurrect Jack Jaguar for even more damage if he so chooses. Uh, we'll see if he takes that line. But again, with the Lancia, I think this game is just about wrapped up because he, the, the Sky Striker Orcus player is just top decking at this point. Obviously, he doesn't know that. We just know that from our perspective, but uh, we'll just see. Here comes the, uh, another copy of Sunlight Wolf here. Sunlight Wolf is going to uh, get back uh, a copy of oh no he's gonna he's gonna go ahead and just summon jaguar here because the will of the salamigrate's the only salamigrate speller trap he has available to him oh i guess he can get sanctuary back that's true that is a uh, salamigrate seller trap so that's a possibility but being able to just go for jaguar here is perfectly fine as well and then he gets to get the ash blossom back which again just further solidifies that he has won this game i mean ash and lancia that's just enough right there even though this is only 3600 next turn he can just pop will get another monster back and just attack for game easily so here we go uh looks like we're gonna go to uh oh no he's actually gonna special summon falco first by uh returning the jack jaguar to his hand I did know at one point some Salamander players that opted to play two copies of Abyss Dweller. I don't think that's the trend anymore, but uh, you know, very well could be. He does have the rank four access. So here we go, 1836, and uh, that's another 12, so 4,800 damage on board here. So a uh, pretty significant amount, but obviously it's uh, not enough to go for game. However, the Ash and the Lancey are going to make it game 100%. Now this uh, Salamander player just checking through his graveyard really quick here in case there's anything he might have missed. I feel like he pretty much covered everything possible. I'm not sure if he uh, wanted to get back. Oh, I don't think he's, I don't know if he's reincarnation link summon as of yet. So he, I don't think he can get back the sanctuary, but if he uh, did, he could potentially do that. He would just have to waste another monster to do that. And it uh, looks like he might. So we're going to get rid of the Jaguar, go for another uh, Sunlight Wolf here, get that Sanctuary back, just get it back online, which is perfectly fine. It just makes your link summoning a little bit easier. You don't have to play it this turn, and uh, we're going to set one and pass. So we got the top deck from the Sky Striker Orcus player. Again, I don't know what kind of top deck you would need to get out of this, but uh, yeah, we're just going to see Lancia come directly out of the Salamander player's hand, and we are going to game number three, ladies and gentlemen. 
So right there again, with how powerful we saw from the performance of game one from Sky Striker Orcus, game two was a completely different story. So let's see how this one ends up. So now we can see the Sky Striker half of the deck here with Sky Striker Engage. A lot of people are starting to say this card should be banned now. I'm tending to lean that way as well after seeing just how, um, you know, this card's been around for almost two years and it's just been like taking some decks to absolutely absurd levels. I'm not sure. You guys can let me know down in the comments what you guys think if Engage should be banned or not. So we're going to go for Hornet Drones here. Hornet Drones is going to link off into Kagari. Kagari can get add back that engage once again. And uh, what's so powerful about this is that it effectively gives you link two worth of fodder just in a single card. It can allow you to play around certain cards as well, just because it, you can play through hand traps in some instances, like you can make stuff like barricade board blocker if you have a uh, Orcist in hand, because then you can like discard it. Like there's just so many reasons that this is good. You can search out stuff like shark cannon, which is a searchable DD crow, thanks to engage or widow anchor to disrupt your opponent and negate their monster effects, or even take them for your own. I mean, the fact too, it just, it's, free draw power like if you get three spells in grave which is not difficult for this deck considering you're maxing out on copies of lure of darkness um just so many different things that it just takes the deck to a completely new level and like i said i feel like this is probably gonna be the strongest deck until we get the ban list in january so bear in mind if you're going to any big tournaments you're gonna want to know how to play against this deck because it's probably gonna start catching on rather quickly so we had double engage, that seems pretty good. We get to get a copy of Shark Cannon as well as a Widow Anchor that now puts three spells in the grave. So unfortunately didn't get the draw there, but um, he still has plenty to work with. He could have used the drones and uh, possibly maybe linked off into like a link two if he really, really wanted to get that extra draw. But uh, I'm curious, I don't think he has any access. Wow, a set five, okay. So he has like no access to Orcus monsters. And I think that's probably the only downside to this. Doesn't look like he's playing Shizuku. I know some players are opting to play that. Um, however, I guess he wouldn't be able to search too much because he does have a copy of Engage and Grave. Typically, if you only have the one Engage, it's fine because then you can Gagari add the one back. Then just go into Shizuku and add another one since you don't have one in the graveyard. So that seems pretty good. So here we go, we see Flame Buffalo going into Baylinx, that's going to trigger their effects, but Call by the Grave is going to get hit on Buffalo, denying the Salamangre player from using any, uh, or excuse me, from getting any more cards. He will get the Sanctuary here, which is fine, but honestly, that's probably the least of his worries. Four back row, man, and we already know what two of them are. We know he has a Widow Anchor that can take something, and he has a Shark Cannon that can banish something uh, pretty much at, you know, <laughs> just like a DD Crow can. So there's still two other back row there he has to worry about, and uh, with the Salmon Great, he's got a full grip, but still, he's got a lot to play through here, even though there's just a lone Kagari on the field. However, this could just uh, also just symbolize another weakness that Sky Striker Orcus has, that if you don't have one of your Orcus cards, you know, it doesn't really get you out of situations like this. Uh, we'll just have to see. So Sign and Mining's pretty good. Gonna pitch a Spinny. You can grab Gazelle out of your deck here, and we'll see if that's what he opts to go for. Don't know what else is in his hand, so it's kind of hard to say what else would be ideal for this particular situation. He's going to go for the Gazelle. This will uh, possibly trigger the Gazelle, so we can just go ahead and special summon it since a Salamangre did hit the graveyard. It looks like he's going to go ahead and do that. That triggers Gazelle to special summon something down, but that's also going to trigger Sea Archiver since a monster was special summoned to a zone a Link monster points to. So that's another just really good card for Salamangre that uh, still sees play to this very day just helps pretty it's pretty much another copy of spinny that doesn't have the salamangre tag to it so now he has instant access to a mirage stallio here so gazelle's gonna get to dump something we'll have to see what he goes for uh it really depends how much he respects these four back row here obviously he knows two of them are very threatening so I don't think you go for a trap here. I actually think you go for, uh, yeah. So it looks like he went for Foxy. I was gonna say, I think a monster would probably be ideal here because the traps, you have to play through all this back row. So I think it's kind of hard to establish the traps in this instance. But again, it also depends on what else is in his hand. So it's hard to say. Now with four back row, I feel like you would want to uh, possibly stop this Mirage Stallio here. So, oh, he's actually gonna link. Okay, so going for Phoenix instead of the Mirage Stallio that will trigger Phoenix's effect. It's gonna pitch a card, go for one of the back row, and this will also allow him to draw a card as well if this effect resolves. So it doesn't really lose too much advantage here if that's the case. And there's an infant impermanent, so impermanence will negate the Phoenix. So you kind of just one for one there. I mean, that's not too bad. 
I mean, I guess you took two monsters to make the Phoenix. You kind of took a bit of neg and card advantage, but again, I mean, you didn't lose your monster, which is perfectly fine because at this point you can just go into uh, Heat Leos and start uh, spinning away the other back row if you, uh, depending on what else, you, what other plays you have available. Spinny's gonna special summon itself to the field since he does control a Baylinx. And uh, again, you have to figure out how to play around this Widow Anchor and this Shark Cannon at this point. And it uh, looks like this might bait it for sure. So here comes the Heat Leo. On summon, it's going to shuffle away one of the back row here. And uh, this is definitely going to prompt uh, something, I would imagine. So we're going to hit the Widow Anchor. Widow Anchor is going to target Heat Leo to negate it. And then we might see a chain of Shark Cannon to special summon another monster from the graveyard. I'm curious to see where he's going to take this. And it looks like there's the Shark Cannon. Okay, so Chain Link 2 Shark Cannon, or rather Chain Link 3 Shark Cannon. He's going to go ahead and uh, banish the Foxy. Opting not to special summon, it looks like. Interesting. Oh no, he is going to take it. Okay, I would imagine you'd want to take that. So he's going to take the Foxy. He's also going to take the uh, Heat Leo until the end of the turn anyway. And uh, with only a uh, Salaman Great Spinny on the Salaman Great player's field, doesn't really have many options now. He took the Foxy to stop a uh, Foxy uh, potential resurrection because then he would be able to go into Mirage Stallion and continue on with his play. So I like the heads up play there and plays passed back. So Heat Leo returns to the Salaman Great player's field and now he's going to get to... Uh, Hopefully, maybe uh, have another turn here. We'll see if the Salaman Great, or excuse me, the Sky Striker Orcus player can actually capitalize here. Looking through the extra deck, though, I don't think he's got many options. One set card. I don't think he drew an Orcus card. Otherwise, I feel like he would have used it already. <laughs> so let's see. It looks like he's taking a dig here. He's got two monsters that he can work with as Link material, but there's not many Link 2s that do anything at this point. Uh, one of them is a Link monster, so you can't go into Mascarena. Uh, Phoenix doesn't do anything because he doesn't have any, just doesn't advance your board whatsoever. I'm curious to see what that other set back row is. But even playing through all uh, four of those back row as a Salmon Grid player, you gotta feel pretty good that you still have your Heat Leo and your uh, Spinny just kind of sitting on the board. That's gotta feel pretty nice. Sky Striker Orcus player just taking a quick look through the graveyard here, just trying to figure out what potential plays he has at this point. Let's see, where is he going to take this? At first he was picking up his extra deck, I thought he had a Gizmech possibly, but Kagar is going to attack Spinny, that's going to force the Baylinx to uh, get banished from the graveyard, so Spinny will survive. And that might be as far as his plays go here, so... Again, seeing a bit of a weakness from the Sky Striker Orcus deck, if you really can't get any of your other Orcus cards, if you would have drawn an Orcus, he would have been off to the races here, because then you could just immediately start linking off, going to your Galatea, and just get your entire board set up, and you'd be looking pretty good, and you play a pretty healthy amount of Orcus monsters or ways to access them, so I think that was an allure of darkness that the Sky Striker Orcus player drew for a turn. He's just going to set a card and pass and just leave the board as is, and this is the opportunity that the Salamanger player needs to come back from this cosmic cyclone hitting the newly set back row oh it was a call by the grave okay so that's not awful call by the grave can uh, potentially get rid of one of the resources here he could get rid of like the spinny that's engraved so that way he doesn't have immediate access to a rank three so at the very least he'd have to waste his battle phase to have access to it which is fine, but we'll have to see. There comes the Sanctuary. We're gonna Reincarnation Summon Heat Leo here, so this way he's going to spin away the last remaining back row. Looks like we're not gonna know what that is. And, uh, oh my God, is that an Ash Blossom? It is! So we're gonna see a normal Summon of Ash Blossom, which happens to be a level three. And now we can go ahead and go into our Mirage Stallio. There's no other threats on the board. Mirage Stallio is gonna come down, and this is probably going to be it here. I don't know what kind of top decking miracle that the uh, Sky Striker Orcus player would need to come back from this, but, you know, the Salmon Grid player managed to survive a turn and he's gonna be able to capitalize on the situation here. He can go for Jack Jaguar, and then at this point he can set up with Sunlight Wolf, and then if he can do that, then he'll be able to uh, get his Ash Blossom back in his hand just to further deny the Sky Striker Orcus player from getting any plays whatsoever. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do by linking off the Heat Leo plus the Jack Jaguar. And here comes the Sunlight Wolf. 
Now we can bring back this uh, Jaguar by uh, putting the Heat Leo back into his extra deck. That's going to trigger the Sunlight Wolf to add Ash Blossom to his hand. Mirage Shadow is going to hit over Kagari, and then we're going to have Jack Jaguar hit over Phoenix, and then uh, Sunlight Wolf's going to hit him for 18 direct. Again, not the most damage, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much at this point because that Ash Blossom is kind of going to thwart any attempts that the Sky Striker Orcus player has it coming back from this, just because there's no Grave setup. I mean, he had a lot of power with the the Sky Striker cards, but um, I mean, you could just see the visible frustration there because it seemed like, you know, if you have double engage, that seems crazy, right? But if you don't have any of your Orcus cards, it really doesn't matter and help you out in this instance. So now we see Balinx. He's going to link off Balinx and Sunlight Wolf for uh, another Heat Leo, and he's just going to pass a turn. So we're going to draw for turn. See what he's got. It's going to be a set monster, and that's probably going to do it because now any monster will just allow him to link off the Mirage Stallio, bounce the card, and that should be more than enough damage to be able to go for game here. Um, Mirage Stallio does not care of if that monster is face up or face down. It will be able to bounce it. I think that might be what the Sky Striker Orcus player is checking for. We're going to summon Falco off of the Mirage Stallio here, link off both monsters, go into a Sunlight Wolf, bounce the set card, and I think that might be all she wrote. Looks like it. There's Jack Jaguar and the extension of the handshake. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. We'll see you next time.